This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist right here in Honolulu. And I am so happy today because I have a, a friend and colleague, and she's our guest today. And we're going to learn things that I think most of you have never known about. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Ingrid Stadler Pre. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Shrink Wrap. Good to be here. Thank you. So, Huna. Yes. H U N A. All right. So let's say that's all I know is how to spell. H-U-N-A. What else would you tell me about Huna? Huna uh, is Hawaiian and means um, secret or uh, that which is hidden, that mm -hmm. which is not easy to be seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a name given to a um, very, very old um, Polynesian uh, philosophy of life. And um, these old teachings are kind of as old as the oldest truth of mankind, but as new as modern quantum physics. And very, very important um, to lead a better life, to fulfill your dreams, to be successful, loving, happy. So you so can uh, incorporate that in your daily life. You uh, come from Salzburg, yep. uh, Austria, and you don't, it's not, too close to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Completely on the other side of the globe. <laughs> How did you hear about Huna? What attracted yeah, you? That was a fun story. You know, I was in uh, the end of my life coaching uh, studies and um, just exchanged with a friend um, audiobooks. And she gave me an audiobook uh, called The Urban Shaman in German at that time. And I was like, never heard about that. And like, okay, you know, she always has good uh, hints. So I'll listen to that. And after five minutes, I was just hooked. It was such a good stuff. <laughs> what hooked you? Yeah, um, kind of the simpleness of these uh, teachings, but the depth and width of this teaching, you know? Uh, and the kind of, like, uh, Sir Kahili King, who wrote the book, and uh, is, I think, one of the uh, most well-known uh, authors about uh, this philosophy and Hawaiian shamanism. Um, he's just to the point, you know, he explains it in a very simple, concise way and with a lot of uh, examples you can incorporate in your daily life. So it's good, good read. <laughs> so is Huna an example of Hawaiian shamanism? Uh, I think Huna is the, the basic philosophy of uh, the Hawaiian shamanism. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, you know, like all Polynesia, not just Hawaii, you know. And, uh, but those teachings are found in ancient wisdoms all over the world. Uh -huh. The only thing it's why I like Huna so much is because it's, it's so concise. It's, for example, uh, just seven Hawaiian words are the seven principles. And it's like you have the tip of seven icebergs. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, um, ice mountains and then uh, it's the word the Hawaiian word and then there's all the knowledge in depth and width uh, to it so so tell us <laughs> these seven words are Ike, Kala, Makia, Manawa, Aloha, Mana and Pono and um, yeah to be to go really into that we need more time but I tell you the uh, translation uh, Serge Kahili King gave to those princi principles and, and then maybe we can talk about one or two a little more in depth. Okay. So, Ike would be the first principle. It uh, says, the world is what you think it is. And what you think your um, beliefs, your expectations, are what uh, creates your experience. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you think the world is a dangerous place to be in, to live in, then you might experience it that way. Uh -huh. because you have all those beliefs. And if you think the world is a happy place to be, um, you might experience it that way. Like a little bit, you know, Paul Watzlawick's 
self-fulfilling prophecy, uh -huh. the story with the hammer, maybe. <laughs> I don't know that story. Yeah, that's a very interesting story about uh, a guy who is uh, thinking, ah, I need a hammer, I want to hang a picture. Uh, I'll go to the neighbor and borrow it from him. And then, but this neighbor was recently not so um, nice or he, he, I don't know what he thinks of me. And then he all gets worked up in his head about that neighbor and that he might not like him or that he is like not a good person. And then he would knock on the door and would shout to the neighbor, keep your hammer. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't say a word. You know, that's this yeah. his own yeah. perception, so his you own create beliefs. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So that's EK. And then, so the, the um, thing to uh, do about Ike is uh, to really be aware of your beliefs, be aware yeah. of what you think about the world, because that's what creates, creates your, experience, your world right. experience. Yeah. So the second would be color, which means uh, there are no limits, and this is a mind-blowing one for sure, because we experience our limits every day. You know. Right. Um, but what we can do again about it is to think, OK, maybe uh, we create our own limits. Mm -hmm. We create, we have limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. We could maybe change. And it says, too, on a, on a different level, not on this objective reality level, um, like on an energy level or on a spiritual level. There are no limits. Mm -hmm. There really are no limits. And you know, modern quantum physics uh, explains it, too. You know, there I'm not uh, ending here, and you too. You know, right. we have this field of energy around us, and so that's a very interesting um, principle to go into depth to. And for us, it's just the idea: be free. You know, be free to choose um, your path. Be free to choose the beliefs or the the, the mindset that helps you, and not the one which is limiting you, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's color, and then there is makia. Very interesting one, I like that one a lot. Uh, energy flows where attention goes. So where we put our focus on, mm -hmm. where we put our attention on, mm -hmm. that gets energized. And that's a very, very, uh, yeah, very important principle uh, for your whole life because um, if we put our attention on the problem, on what we don't want, that gets energized. So that gets more in our life. And we don't want that. <laughs> we want right. good things to happen. So we have to put our focus on that. We have to really learn how to switch our focus and to focus on what we want, on the good things, and and so I, Energize that. because what I do yeah. a lot in my practice is work with couples. Yeah. I was just working with a couple, and um, they, they're fighting about the stupidest little things. And they know it, and they can't stop it. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it's really bad. It's, they could break up. Mm -hmm. And they're desperate to change. They love each other, and they don't know why they keep getting into these fights. And I talk to them about how in the beginning of a relationship, the honeymoon period of a relationship, um, there's something that they call uh, overriding positive regard, yeah. right? So that when I first meet you, everything you do just adds to your <laughs> wonderfulness, right? If you, you trip and fall down, it's, oh, she's so adorable, right? Mm -hmm. Look, she, isn't that cute mm -hmm. the way she did that, right? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. if you forget something, it's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just love her more because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, later on, you focus, you, you on, focus on the negative. Like, what's, yeah. why is she so clumsy? <laughs> <laughs> why can't she remember everything? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or the, the classic of, you know, when I, when I first met him, I just loved his sense of humor. And now I hate him because he's mm -hmm. never serious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And so trying to work with the couple, trying to refocus, because when you, you focus on the negative mm -hmm. in a relationship like that, you, you just bring out more of the negative, mm -hmm. right? If mm -hmm. all you do is focus on the mistakes the other person made or you are thinking that their intention is towards you as negative, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
then it creates them. Absolutely. Because you're Sometimes you it's just a story you get in your defensive mind. and yeah. like the guy with the hammer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just a story in the head and the yeah. other person is not even thinking uh, the way you think. So in this case, definitely I think a very, very good exercise for this couple would be to just take a deep breath uh -huh. and change the focus. You know, really for both of them, you know, change the focus on, on the other side of the metal, you know, uh -huh. because uh -huh. there's always two sides of everything, At you least. know, <laughs> at least in the menu. So, um, yeah, that's a, a, a beautiful book written by Serge King as well is uh, Healing Relationships. It's uh -huh. right on that um, theme. And uh, one, of, one of the exercises definitely I would suggest would be immediately changing the focus and thinking about what I like in this person, right. what, what I love, what, I, what, what he does good. Uh, okay, that might be you know, not what I want now, and maybe you can uh, tell the other person, you know, I would like you to do that, instead of criticizing, ah, you did that to me now. It's, it's always much easier, you know. Uh, if you criticize people, and that brings us to the Aloha principle, uh -huh. uh, uh, criticism diminishes love. Uh -huh. Compliments and appreciation Gratitude raises aloha. So, yeah, it's funny. I just thought of this couple again because yeah. they got into this argument about they were hiking, and she said, "You know, I feel like I'm walking alone. Come on, catch up to me." And he's like, "I'm standing right next to you." So if she had said instead, "I love it when you're next to me," <laughs> same message, yeah. really. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, then it's or, praise instead of criticism. Absolutely. Uh, I would love it so much more if we could, get, uh, get, uh, you know, uh, get side by side, or yeah. if you hold my hand, or whatever, you know. Yeah. And then he would be pleased because he gets, you know, an idea of what he wants, and yeah. not just what he doesn't want. Because yeah. what he doesn't want is just one thing, and it could be so much more what she wants. Right. So it's much easier to be precise in what you want. Yeah. I think that's a very, yeah, could be very helpful for a lot of relationships, not just the uh, relationships between couples. Oh, business relationship, friends relationship, yeah. parent, child. Absolutely. Right. So focus, makia, is a very, very, very interesting uh, principle. And then there would be manawa, uh, which is called uh, now is the moment of power. Uh -huh. Right here, in this moment, is all our power. You know, uh, if we are here with all our senses, with all our uh, sense perceptions, we have so much more. Um, charisma, mm -hmm. uh, power to use. We are not preoccupied with you know, thinking of yesterday or fearing something about tomorrow. We are here and now with all our senses and can be, you know, in the here and now we can plant the seeds for the future and even harvest what we uh, did in the past. Uh -huh. But uh, we should not um, kind of uh, we should be aware that this present moment is everything we have. Right. Every moment. And that's the beauty and the important thing, and that's in principles like mindfulness, uh, the power of now, Eckhart Tolle puts a lot of emphasis on that. Yeah. So Hold that thought. Yeah. Right now I'm hearing a voice in my head <laughs> saying we need to take a break. We'll be right back. Don't touch your mouse. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line, keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the Let's go.
everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. I am still with Ingrid Stotler Pree. And Ingrid, we were talking before about something you call Pico Pico. Yes. Can you uh, remind me, uh, demonstrate that with me? Yeah. Pico Pico is a uh, breathing technique, a Hawaiian uh -huh. breathing technique we use uh, for relaxing, for energizing our body. And it's a good example for this Makia principle where we put uh, the energy flows where attention goes. And it's a kind of focused breath technique. So as you inhale mm -hmm. through your nose, you put your attention on the crown of your head. Mm -hmm. And as you exhale, you put the attention either on your belly, on mm -hmm. your on pico, pico. pico, yeah, that's what pico means center. Uh -huh. So center to center, either on your belly or if you want to have a a uh, little pico flush, you put it on your um, on the soles of your feet. So you have a even wider energy flow. So and it would be like that. You breathe in through your nose and focus the crown of your head and then exhale and focus on your feet, for example. And then and and you just put the focus there. You don't inhale through those centers, you just switch focus. And as you switch the focus, you see that you can't think of something else while you do this because your thoughts are with the focus. And then, you know, of course, the breath energizes your body and every it's cell. Very, <coughs> very calming. Very calming and at the same time energizing. So it can be used, you know, in every situation, like before a talk, while a talk, <laughs> 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 even before I, I'm, uh, I do this for centering before a client comes, for example, mm -hmm. to really be in the present moment, right there, right for this person. And or it can be done, you know, while that the couple is hiking and getting all worked up and in a fight and they could say you know what let's take a break and do some pico pico press mm -hmm. and then switch the focus this is simple sometimes not easy to really do it you know practice yeah when you get all worked up you sure. say i don't want to do that <laughs> but it could be uh, um, like um, their exercise for the next week you know i don't know <laughs> when you see yeah. them again uh -huh. And then uh, they can tell you how they feel with it because that's a very powerful exercise. Yeah? It is. Yeah. It, it works for me. <laughs> so what was the next principle? The next principle uh, would be then uh, one of my favorites, aloha. Ah. And you know, all the Hawaiians know aloha means hello, goodbye, but the deeper meaning is love. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, learned from Serge Kahili King, my Hawaiian teacher and mentor, an even deeper uh, meaning uh, called, uh, which means like the syllables of this world, like alo, oha, and ha, they have an even deeper meaning. Uh, and it is the joyful sharing of life energy in the present. So this is aloha, to joyful share life energy in the present. So even we share aloha now, because yes. we have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and the secret uh, is that, you know, there were a lot of teachers coming to this planet and telling us about the love principle, even Jesus, you know? Right. Um, and the Hawaiians see it that way, that if you, when you share aloha, mm -hmm. then you get attuned to the divine power, mm -hmm. which they call mana. So aloha and mana go together. And it's um, like 
uh, powerful love and loving power. Oh. And so attuning to this energy of life, this love energy, um, gets you powerful in the present moment to change your life, to pursue happiness, to be successful. And the very secret about how to you know, um, uh, practice that is to bless everything or everyone um, who uh, incor incorporates that what you want, what you like. Like, for example, um, if you want to uh, become rich, you don't need to be to envy rich persons. You have to bless them. You have mm. to bless everything that um, uh, incorporates richness or mm. that, that uh, like, like abundance, like uh -huh. abundant uh, water in the ocean, like um, everything abundant, for example. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this creates uh, your own uh, higher vibration, your own energy flow, and with the principal um, um, mana uh, and manawa, it it you you incorporate that in your life more because you focus on it, so you right. energize that, and that's a, a very simple technique, and I practice it every day to uh, raise my energy level, just when walking. I like the Nordic walking with the poles. Right, right. <laughs> I'm the only weird one on Kalua <laughs> Beach <laughs> with the walking poles. And uh, when I do that, I just, I'm thankful. I'm praising or I'm blessing my surroundings. You know, the beautiful mm -hmm. ocean, the palm trees, the weather. In Salzburg, when I'm walking, the beautiful mountains or the snow or architecture, whatever is, right. is there. Just this feeling of appreciation. Appreciation, gratitude. Right. Uh, and praise or complimenting raises your own uh, energy level. So it not just helps the person you are giving a compliment to, you know, mm -hmm. which always feels good, mm -hmm. but it feels good for yourself too. To give it. To give it. Right. And in my uh, seminars and even in my coachings, I try a technique uh, with a kinesiologic testing um, where you really can prove that to a person. Like, mm -hmm. When you compliment yourself, when you make this testing with the, the muscle testing, uh -huh. when you compliment yourself, you are test strong. Uh -huh. When you criticize yourself, you get weak. Uh -huh. The same happens if you uh, criticize another person. You're, you are testing weak. So uh, I think if enough people know that, <laughs> that criticizing others and, you know, or even swearing and stuff like that, you know, um, drains your own energy. Mm -hmm. They might stop that. Right, and but it's very hard blessing. for people. I mean, in a culture, I think especially in Hawaii, there is a culture of humility. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, it goes against the grain for people to praise themselves, mm -hmm. to think highly of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does that fit? What do you do about that? Sure, the same in, in Austria. You know, uh -huh. we were, there was even a saying, um, uh, I'm so much in English now that I forget my, Aust <laughs> my German, but uh, that uh, it's not allowed to, to uh, Praise be, proud, be proud uh, of yourself, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh, yeah. So, um, yeah, but um, we have to overcome that. We mm. have to, and I think when I um, have clients who are Christians, for example, then I come with the, uh, one of the commandments. And Jesus said too to us, um, love thyself, mm -hmm. uh, love thy neighbor as, as thyself. thyself. So, and you have to first love and, and be nice to yourself, and mm -hmm. then you can do it to others. So I think it's just natural. And I don't know uh, when on the way we lost that. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, it's natural. We don't need to put us higher than others, right. but we can put ourselves on the same height. Well, it reminds you know? me of the um, Hindu uh, namaste, Yeah. right? And which is, I recognize the god or beautiful. goddess inside of you. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That's why these teachings and this knowledge is ancient and all over the world. It's not just Huna uh, saying those things, but it's even in a very nice and concise way gathered by those old Polynesians that 
So I don't want to forget that we cover... Mana Pono. We pono. don't have Mana and Pono. <laughs> mana is all power comes from within. Uh -huh. So even um, like the uh, divine power mm -hmm. comes through us. Uh -huh. So you can see like the, the spark of God within us, which is all the power we have, you know, mm -hmm. and we can get inspiration from our higher selves or from God, but through us, it's, it's working, you know, so uh -huh. this is mana. And then um, Pono uh, is the principle, effectiveness is the measure of truth. So if it works, it's true. Uh -huh. If it doesn't work, try something else. <laughs> so that means too to be flexible uh, to try something else if it doesn't work. And Huna uh, is everything that works, you know. So for example, a Hawaiian shaman would incorporate all other techniques he would see or uh, find somewhere else and incorporate it because if it works, it's Huna. Yeah, I think that's why like in counseling, mm -hmm. um, I don't come in with a plan. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you told me this and then I'm going to do A, B, C, D. Yeah. Right? I don't know because to me it's all about the relationship. Right? And my relationship to my client is just if they're working on their relationship with a significant other or anybody else in their life, they, it, it, it's the same thing. I mean, it's all about the here and now, yeah. right? Which word is that? The manawa. Manawa, right? It's mm -hmm. all about what's happening now yeah. between us so that we can navigate it. So how can I come in with a plan? And even if I do have a sort of general outline, it needs mm -hmm. to be flexible. Mm -hmm. What's sure. the word for that? Yeah, pono. <laughs> pono. Pono, yeah. Right. It's interesting because so, the word pono sometimes pono. is used differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, the, the meaning of pono, one of the meanings is to make things right. Yes. Right? right. You know, like uh, to, to live pono is to live right. Right. And one, yeah, yeah. And one, this effectiveness is the measure of truth, uh, doesn't, does also mean, you know, if you want to pursue a good goal, uh, you have to do it in a good way too. Uh -huh. You don't walk over dead bodies to a good goal, you know, that's not pono. So. Pono would be a good goal and a good way to this of goal. getting there. Yeah. Right. So the it's sort of the opposite of the ends justifying the means. No, no. absolutely not. They have yeah. to be the same. Absolutely. Yeah. And and what you said with the client, I think that uh, for me uh, I, I do the same too because uh, and you too we have all our background. You know we have all our uh, studying uh, in terms of different techniques, different. Mm -hmm approaches, uh, but when their person is over there, you have to be present with that person. Right, yeah, and then, forget about the technique. Absolutely, <laughs> and then sometimes uh, the magical happens and right. you, you feel what's the next right thing to do, and then uh, asking the, the client would be like, oh yes, that would be the, the, the next step. Mm -hmm. So, they're telling me right now, be pono, yes. to wrap it up, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have to do this some more. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ingrid, so much thank you for, for coming on me. to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. <laughs> and I hope you catch us on our next installment of Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs>